Help support our coverage with a free account on Privacy, the service that keeps you protected when shopping online. Get $5 to try it now by using promo code QZZ2J. And with Blueberry, the community that gives creators the power to make money, get detailed audience measurements, and host their audio and video. Get a 30-day free trial by using promo code BLUEBERRY004. So anyway, we are up to our next guest, uh, Dan Bowden. Dan, how you doing? I'm doing well, but my name's Michael P. Vitello. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think your mic was on quite yet then either, so why don't you introduce yourself again? Yeah, my name's Michael Pivato, and okay. I'm with AOR. Okay, okay. So, Dan, was, you're taking Dan's place, I'm guessing. Yeah, I am taking All Dan's right. place. I'm All the right. head of the U.S. for the company, so oh, fantastic. it makes sense to come over. Fantastic. All right. So, uh, Mike, why don't you tell us a little bit about what AOR is? Yeah, so we're in the uh, personal air filtration respiration business. So okay. There are uh, literally hundreds of millions of very cool people living in very cool cities, okay. breathing really bad air. And a lot of them seek protection today. They wear masks. Yeah, I uh-huh. mean, you if, if you if you walk through the hall right now, you'd see a thousand or two thousand people wearing a mask. Absolutely. Right the uh, the reality is those masks are flawed, because they require two things: a filter to block stuff, yep, and a nearly perfect seal to stop the little stuff, and that's where the problem lies. And I think. You know, as you're saying that, I think most people probably understand that. I mean, I, I know I look at people who are wearing a mask, and I'm like, there really isn't that much protection. I mean, I suppose there's a little bit of protection, but not that much. Uh, probably more than anything else, and I, I'm just thinking out loud, is that maybe if that person is not feeling well, that maybe yes. they're actually just wearing the mask so they're not coughing or, or sneezing on other people which is fantastic that they do that, yes. right? You know, but other than that, there really isn't much protection for the inbound stuff. Correct. Yep. That's exactly right. Yep. Bacteria is big, yep. so having something like that with those so-called flaws right. is fine because right. that they're coughing out or breathing out, that's going to get captured. Yes. We're really in the air, air pollution sure. is what we're dealing sure. with. Sure, sure. So tell me a little bit about what your solution yeah, is. Yeah, so what we found was we started kind of on a, uh, uh, at a filter level first, okay. uh, and we realized that we had an amazing filter in the lab. But when we started putting it on people, just like everybody else's, it's flawed because okay. of this gap, okay. this constant gap that's there. So we basically leaned into that and said, let's alleviate the seal altogether. So what we do is we have fans that will never be bigger, louder, bulkier than first generation. But those fans draw in the air. Okay. Anything that's in the air is pulled in. And then it goes through a multiple stage of filtration down to a nano level. So by the time that the air hits the blades of the fan, 98.7% of PM2.5, we, we captured it. Okay. So now that newly cleaned air is flushed to the front of the face from both sides until they collide. It forms a, a pocket, a turbulent pocket of clean air. So for every breath you have, the pressure is greater inside than outside, so nothing outside can get inside. The seal is formed by air pressure. Okay. And you obviously have the yeah. device right here. Yeah, so basically you can get an idea here. So okay. this is our prototype. Okay. We're, we're, a, we're a tweener. We launched this year, July of 2020, Okay. And but we wanted to be here. Okay. So this is where we are in yep. our development cycle. Yep, yep. This is Proto-1, we call Okay. So proof of concept. So we're bringing in the air. We're drawing it in. It goes through this our drivetrain chamber that is cleaning the air all the way through till it touches the blades and now okay. it's blown. You see an air pressure gauge in the front. Okay. That's to tell us the pressure is greater inside than outside. If it's not, the fans pick up. In other words, if you're, our target is a, a commuter in Seoul, Korea, about two hours a day. They live a filtered life until they're outside. Okay. And they're commuting to another filtered environment of work. They're, they're right now going out and if they're late for the train and they take off running, they're going to be taking air out of that mask. You're going to, you're, the pressure is going to go down. The system knows it, so it, the fan picks up, and continu- you have a continuous flow of clean air, high-pressure clean air, whenever you need it. So are there, I mean, you bring up a very interesting point. Are there parts of the world that, uh, I mean, I think of L.A., of course. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if that's our worst community it is. In, okay, in the country. Uh, but there are parts of the world that are significantly worse, correct? Yeah, there are. I mean, uh, the, the fastest growing market for personal air filtration is the United States. Okay. Small base. Okay. Right? Our business eventually in the U.S. will be industrial. Okay. That's heavily regulated, and that takes time. We'll get there. So in the beginning, it's going to be probably West Coast, 
New York City. Okay. You know, if you're in a large metropolitan sure. area, there's cars all around yep. you. Yep. Trust. The World Health Organization says 92% of all people on the planet are breathing unhealthy air. So even though you don't feel it, it's there. Obviously, if you're in Beijing or New Delhi, you feel it. Right. And you kind of see it when right. you expel. Right. So, yeah, it's a secondary market for us initially, but as we get into industrial, medical, military, it'll grow. I see. So are you, I mean, is, is that your goal basically is to, I, I'm interested in your marketing of this product because, you know, I'm not sure, you know, right now, well, I live in North Dakota. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, we have blue skies and, and this, you know, we, we can't see our air unless it's snowing, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but there are parts of the country, I mean, I, I, you're right. I mean, I go to New York City and I, I, I feel so fortunate with where I live because I go there or in L.A. or whatever. And you're right. You're, you, can't, you can't leave the coffee shop and walk outside and not breathe exhaust fumes. Absolutely. Or everything else that's in the air, you know. So I can see where people, I'm just, I have a, I'm just telling you right now, I mean, personally, I think I would have a hard time with using this in a public environment, but in a, in a work environment, I would see that. But yeah, I think we, you we, need to, you know, I'm just saying that with me, you'd have to educate me a little bit more. But I, yeah. I think I'm close right now. But Well, I would say this. Um, we live in a country where people are not, it's not a norm to wear a mask around. Right, So right. Autumn, it'd be like if people wore headphones around like this all right, the time. Right, exactly. And then all of a sudden, in our, in our country, they don't. And so you show up, they're going, why is this guy wearing right, a headset around? Right, right. Well, it's an everyday occurrence in these cities. So we don't have a barrier of like, ooh, will they put something on their face? They're doing it every single day. It just doesn't work. That's interesting because, you know, the headphone analogy is really good because the reason we have these on in here is because the noise pollution in here is so crazy, you and I couldn't even have a conversation on the air that they would be able to hear unless we had these crazy headphones with these microphones. Yeah, right? correct. That's, and then, so, and everybody understands that when they're walking by that they know what's going on here because of that, right? So the same thing would be true here. Um, and I, I would imagine, so I suffer from allergies. Yeah, 25 million Americans have asthma, and you have a 40% greater episode of, a, uh, of an attack yes. in just moderate air yes. pollution. So if you wore this and that took that away, right there. I mean, why yeah. would you not wear this, right? Yeah. yeah, I believe that there's, well, we know that there's all these other markets. Our first and primary objective is protect people from air pollution. We have a whole array and a big, giant, you know, ambitious plan yep. to do a bunch of other stuff later. But we got to first do this yep. before anybody cares about the rest. So you're launching the product in the second quarter of this year? We launch it in July. In July. This year. We okay. deliver in July of this year. We're okay. taking orders here. Oh, you are. Okay. Well, fantastic. And uh, what does the unit run? It's $350. Okay. Um, it's a connected device. The other part I wanted to okay. mention in here is right now you fantastic. buy a mask that we know doesn't really work. Yep. But you don't know that. Right. You buy it, you put it on, and you assume it works. So we're the first ever device to tell you that because we have sensors. It's a, it's a, it's a wearable. That's why we're in this section. Yes. And it tells you what's in the air around you. Do you need to wear this? Are you protected or not protected? Uh, and so it, it crea what your battery life is like, what your filter life is like. So we, it's, a, it's the first ever kind of connected device. And so it leads us to a kind of a, a runway. You imagine... When we get into an industrial setting, I grew up in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Okay. Great place. Hot, humid, oil refineries all around the Gulf of Mexico. Yep. You work in that condition, it's 92 degrees, 97% humidity. You are not wearing a silicone rubber mask on your face right. very long. Right. So this would allow us to work uh, compliance. So the boss, the foreman is going to know who's not wearing it, who should be wearing it, and it just you know helps them the, you know, through their entire kind of chain of right, compliance. Right, right. Filters, uh, are they washable or do you have to replace them occasionally? No, they're replaceable and as okay. a connected device, um, it tells you when. You know, okay. we, we know when there's when there's 20% life left on the filter, you'll okay. get a, um, a, you know, a warning on that right, and they'll tell right. you when you, the opportunity right. to order again. And batteries as well? Or yeah, battery, okay. a charge for an hour and you have a five hour life. Oh, okay. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. So, okay, fantastic. And where do we find out more information about this? AO-air.com. Very nice, very nice. Mike, it's been fantastic yeah, having you on the thank show. thank you very much. Thanks for bringing this along. I, this is what I love about CES is people who have innovative ideas that come here and share them with us. So, I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate it too. Thank right, you. Thank you.